I want to now go back to our news director, Rahul Kamal, for the latest on that. Uh, Rahul, what are the uh, trends that you're also tracking? What do you think is happening? Uh, it looks like Trump is definitely leading in more and more states now. Rahul, if you can hear me, uh, with the trends that are coming in, it looks like that uh, it's more and more turning into red than blue. What do you make of it? Take you through all the latest data coming in from the United States where counting is currently on. Of the electoral votes, uh, 242 have gone to the Republicans. Donald Trump and the Republicans currently leading on 242 electoral votes. 108 for Kamala Harris. Uh, 188 to be decided still being counted. Uh, if you look at the projections that are coming at this moment uh, from what uh, the latest updates suggest Donald Trump has an 89% chance of becoming president again. And the reason for this is that Donald Trump seems to be very likely at this moment to take Georgia and North Carolina. Uh, Kamala Harris needed to sweep Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. But at this moment in these crucial battleground states, it doesn't seem she has the advantage. The current prediction is that Donald Trump could end up at about 301 electoral college votes versus 230. 37 for Kamala Harris. If you look at what happened in the last uh, elections four years ago, Joe Biden ended up with 303 electoral college votes. You need 270 to win. Uh, Donald Trump at that time had 235. From the votes that have been counted so far, 226 votes have gone in the same direction as they did four years ago. 108 have gone in favor of Kamala Harris. 16 seem to have flipped. Now remember, every electoral college vote flipping is what seems to be making the difference. 188 total votes still to be counted, still to be decided. Out of these, 100 votes seeming safe. Remember, big states like California with 54 uh, electoral college votes, those are very likely to go towards the Democrats from the way voting uh, is current from the way counting is currently going on uh, so 100 safe electoral college votes for the Democrats five for the Republicans uh, 18 likely for the Democrats four for the Republicans 50 are the toss-ups uh, electoral college votes which at this baseline at this moment suggests that Kamala Harris sits on 226 uh, Donald Trump sits at 262, you need to cross 270 to win. He's already at 262, which suggests his path to victory is now looking more likely. If I see where these numbers are coming from, a state like Pennsylvania, 19 electoral college votes here. This is where Kamala Harris was hoping to do well. This is where a lot of the energy and effort made by the Democrats has been concentrated. Of the votes that have been counted, in uh, Pennsylvania, currently, Donald Trump has 50.8% of the votes. Kamala Harris has 48.3% of the votes. This gap is increasing. Earlier, remember, Kamala Harris was leading in Pennsylvania. That's now seeming to slip out of her hands. And the moment Pennsylvania slips out of the Democrats' hands, you know that Donald Trump's path to the White House becomes easier. 67% of the votes in the state of Pennsylvania have already been counted, uh, and Donald Trump's lead seems to be getting bigger. Remember, this is where the Democrats were hoping that the anger amongst the Puerto Ricans would make a big difference. So despite all the negatives that have hampered uh, the Donald Trump campaign, he still leads on 50.8% of the votes. If I look at some of the other battleground states, I'll take Michigan. Uh, in Michigan, uh, Kamala Harris has a comfortable 51.5% uh, votes versus 46.8% for Donald Trump. So a comfortable gap here for the Democrat candidate. If I come now to Wisconsin, another key battleground state here too. Uh, in Wisconsin, with 60% of the votes already counted, Donald Trump has a 50.2% vote share versus 48.3% for Kamala Harris. So the moment these crucial battleground states, the blue wall states, start slipping away from the Democrats, which is why at this moment it seems quite likely that Donald Trump could end up crossing the 300-figure mark. He needs 270 to win. Um, Despite the limitations of his campaign, at this moment it seems more likely that Donald Trump is going to be President of the United States once again, becoming only the second man in American history to have a gap term in the middle, to win once, lose once and then come back potentially to win uh, the US presidential race once more. Pooja.
Fascinating. Uh, thank you so much, Rahul, for getting us all this data perspective and help us understand because D Donald Trump, remember, amid all the controversies and the cases against him, how will he return? What will be his policies like? Thank you very much, Rahul. I want to now go to our guests as well. Sushant Sareen, tracking all the latest uh, and I'm sure has a lot of hot takes to give. Sushant, what do you make of this? It was considered so close to call, so neck and neck. Is it really with the trends that are coming in or do you think it's going to be Donald Trump coming back to lead the USA? Sushant, Indian I think your microphone is on mute. Yes, go ahead. Please. Yeah, I so if Indian elections have taught us something, it is that yes. don't trust political punditry. <laughs> uh, pollsters and pundits simply cannot read the field anymore. Uh, I think that's the only conclusion one can draw uh, when it comes to the sample size of the two largest democracies in the world. Uh, we all, you know, all pundits get it wrong, right? All pollsters are getting it wrong. And maybe there are certain biases uh, which are uh, being reflected in their analysis. So one is that. Uh, my own sense is that if Donald Trump wins, I think he'll win mm. comfortably. If Kamala Harris wins, she'll win comfortably. Uh, we probably, you know, you still have the West Coast to go. I, I don't think the map you've been showing shows, uh, you know, the big states like uh, California with 50 electoral uh, votes coming in. So there is that one factor. Her numbers are going to go up. And then, of course, as Rahul was talking about the battleground states, uh, we'll wait and see how that works out. As far as India is concerned, look, uh, you know, it's 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 going to be a it's going to be a bit of a toss up. You have uh, you have a certain strategic continuity, yes, with the Democrats, but you also have Democrats who are extremely interventionist, uh, interfering in your own affairs, uh, always hectoring, always you know, uh, trying to take this moral positions on things uh, when their own positions back home uh, simply do not. Uh, stand up to scrutiny. So one is that factor. With the Republicans, you will not have the kind of interventions that the Democrats do, but there will be a lot more uh, under Trump. There will be a lot more uh, uh, disruptionist. Uh, I don't have a problem with uh, anybody being transactional because I believe all international relations are transactional in one form or another. Now you can give it whatever label you want to give it. You can you know, you can package it uh, in strategic terms, you can package it in ideological terms, you do what you want to do. At the end of the day, all international relations are uh, transactional. So, uh, you know, and I don't have a problem with transactional. I think that's a good way to go because uh, then it's basically that you're friends with benefits. Uh, and when the benefits stop, you choose other friends. That's as simple as that. Um, and I, I don't, to see a problem with that. So on that count, I don't have much of, you know, it's a bit of a toss up. Do you want an interventionist America or a disruptionist America? Mm. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, it's okay. It's sick. And, okay. and just the last point, you know, sure. there is this lot of excitement in India of an Indian origin uh, person uh, might become the president. We still don't know. But look, I have no expectations from anybody of Indian origin, Why? whether in Western academia, and I don't even take them seriously because most of the time they're trying to fit in, they're trying to mouth, you know, what their masters are asking them to mouth. So I don't take them seriously. Uh, mm. And I have not seen any of the American, with some notable honorable exceptions, most American uh, Indians who are in government mm. or are in Correct. positions of authority... Uh, I haven't really batted for India in the same way and, as... And I understand your concern there, Sushant, to. because are we putting too much expectation on someone who doesn't want to take that responsibility or burden on the shoulders right now? Sushant, uh, stay on with me because I do have uh, another question for you, but it's what the elections have as consequence and repercussions on the stock market as well. That's what's reflective of the political fluctuations happening right now. We have some updates on that. Let's take a look about how the markets presently are. And this is important. Look at that consumer friendly pocket friendly uh, garments to offer especially with the kind of uh, offering i happened to step into one of the trend outlets and i was quite amazingly pleased with the change that i saw sakshi so and more importantly what i have seen is that uh, from online to offline that's what is happening and possibly you will have more positivity in terms of footfalls etc 
guys we need to focus back on the it index uh, this is uh, now a clear clear indication that at least uh, what the indian markets are thinking of us electoral results now 700 points higher on the it index 41110 will this be a day when the it index will hit uh, a four digit mark in terms of gains only time will tell but uh, all signs are there ladies and gentlemen look at what tcs is doing a very strong show now it has reclaimed uh, the 4000 rupee mark as far as prices are concerned tcs at the moment is quoting 48 rupees higher infosys is contributing uh, 35 points up to percentage points and if you look at the contributions that are coming from uh, uh, the it space within the nifty it's clearly infosys 35 points tcs 13 points and of course overall the nifty is now accelerating ladies and gentlemen across the board a very very strong show in the it space e clerks hcl tech all of them are now pointing to increased spending coming in from the us geography so actually what are you watching Absolutely, it's IT which is taking it away and I think it's already penciling in uh, what uh, we were discussing, a Donald Trump victory coming into four as well and Gaurang, you were the first one to talk about two sectors that could be benefiting if uh, Donald Trump comes back to the stage and one is IT and the other one is pharma. So it's a reminder for us that it's not just about political opinions and the consequence of it. It's also as much reflective on the markets and for investors. So we'll be tracking the market as well for you.